So you're thinking about visiting either Playa del Carmen or Tulum, or maybe both, but you aren't sure which place is best for you. Well, this video is going to give you an idea of what to expect during your visit to either of these popular vacation spots. But first, help me out and give this video a thumbs up. I'm currently working on rebranding my channel, so I need your help to improve my ranking in the algorithm. Thank you so much. Hello humans, my name is Kevin Cook. I've lived in Playa del Carmen off and on for a couple of months and I've visited Tulum three times, so I have a good idea of what's going on in both areas. And I thought this video would be helpful for someone who plans to visit. So with that being said, let's jump right in. Getting around in Playa del Carmen. The roads are all designed like a numerical grid. So if you have any directional sense, you can grasp the layout of the whole town after like a 15 minute walk. One thing I love to do when I visit a new destination is go for a long walk. Only after I've spent a half day or so walking around a place do I really feel like I've come to know it. But like I said, Playa del Carmen is designed to be efficient and easy for tourists to understand. Take a short walk around the town and you'll see what I mean. It's really simply designed. Taxis are everywhere in Playa del Carmen and they're so cheap. Here are a few tips for always getting the fair price of a taxi. To get from one end of town to another, it shouldn't cost you more than 60 pesos, which is roughly three US dollars. Most destinations should only cost about 40 or 50 pesos because everything is so close. And if you wanna take a taxi back to your hotel from the beach, don't take a taxi from 10th Avenue. It's like picking the low hanging taxi fruit because all those taxis are just waiting there trying to prey on unsuspecting tourists. Instead, walk one more block to 15th Avenue and you'll get fair taxi prices there. Also, try to know the name of your destination first and say it to the taxi rather than simply pointing to a location shown on your phone screen. Taxis will definitely try to upcharge you if you come across as too much of a tourist. As for getting around in Tulum, there are basically three roads there. One that leads to the ruins, one that leads to the beach, and another that leads to the town center. Most people get around one of two ways, either with a taxi or a bicycle. The town of Tulum is separated from the beach by a long road. You can walk it like I tried to do once, but be prepared to spend an hour and a half going down the path. Seriously, a bicycle is highly recommended. They have plenty of bike rental spots along the road that lead to and from the beach. And to give you the energy you'll need to reach your destination, stop and enjoy a cup of delicious, but expensive coffee at one of these cute little cafes next to the bicycle path. I stopped at this cozy spot for travelers, decked out with two old Volkswagen vans converted into a mini restaurant. And when you get there, tell a monkey abroad sent ya. Actually, no, don't tell them that. They don't know who I am. The taxis in Tulum are outrageously expensive. That's why I recommend you get used to riding a bicycle. Standard price is like 15 to 20 US dollars just to get from the town to the beach, and it's not even very far. Things to do. In Playa del Carmen, it's so much more developed than Tulum, and there's just way more going on here. It has both the infrastructure to allow for touristy activities, as well as the option for proper long-term living. There are multiple supermarkets, a world-class gym, international cuisine, a proper nightlife. It's definitely a better spot for living medium or long-term compared to Tulum. And if you're into partying, Playa del Carmen definitely has a better nightclub scene. Tulum is more of a resort bubble, perfect for short bursts of time, but I can't imagine staying here for longer than a week. You just run out of things to do. But one thing that I love about Tulum is its beachside ruins. Once upon a time, Tulum was an area for the Mayan higher class, acting as a trade hub for obsidian, limestone, and feathers. But now all that remains are the stone skeletons of an ancient Mayan civilization. And a ton of iguanas. Seriously, the ruins are absolutely crawling with iguanas, and some of them are like three feet long. They seem to be guarding this area, like they're inhabited by the spirits of the Mayans, observing tourists, ready to curse anyone who tosses a cigarette butt amongst these sacred grounds. But seriously, the iguanas are super chill and will pose for photos. They're obviously used to seeing people walking in and around the ruins. If you're visiting this area of Mexico, you have to check out these cenotes here. Both Tulum and Playa del Carmen are nearby to a bunch of cenotes. 
These are underwater caves filled with crystal clear spring water and they're a must see feature of the Riviera Maya. The one shown in this video is Cenote Cristalino and it's located halfway between Tulum and Playa del Carmen. Cost of living. If you're sticking to a budget, then Playa del Carmen is a better choice for sure. In Tulum, you're gonna pay double the cost for food, quadruple the cost for a room, and 10 times the cost for taxis. Really, it just boils down to supply and demand. Whereas Playa del Carmen is loaded with hotels and Airbnbs, there just aren't many places to stay in Tulum. A decent studio apartment in Playa del Carmen goes for like 20 to $30 a night. But in Tulum, you're looking at 60 to 120 USD per night for a room in town and 100 to 300 USD a night for a room on the beach. Now let's talk about the beaches in each town. Playa del Carmen, like I mentioned before, it's a developed urban area, so the beaches aren't that attractive. There's a healthy mix of international tourists and Mexican nationals on the beach here, so the beaches have a really down-to-earth vibe. To your left, you'll see Mexican families posted up under umbrellas jamming out to a mariachi band. And to your right, you'll see a group of young international vacationers jamming out to electronic music. And further down the beach, you'll see a mix of folks playing volleyball together. I made a full video describing the various beaches you can visit in Playa del Carmen, so be sure to check that video out before you come. I'll put a link in the description. The beach in Tulum is definitely more attractive than Playa del Carmen, but that's because it's far more exclusive. Really, the best way to enjoy Tulum is by spending your day at a beach club. Walk up and down the main resort coast and you'll hear music blasting in the speakers and see a crowd of generally attractive people sipping their bevies at their tables. There's hardly any beach access to those who aren't staying in a resort, but one or two entrances do exist that'll allow for the general public. However, they'll ask you where you're planning to go once you're at the beach. So be ready to spit out the name of any random beach club or something. I usually just say I'm heading to the Tulum Jungle Gym and they grant me access. Now for the vibes. Okay folks, Playa del Carmen, it's definitely a touristy area, but at least it feels like Mexico. Walk a couple blocks away from the main tourist strip and you'll be like, oh wow, yeah, this is Mexico. Colorful building facades, cheap laundromats, street food, a strong local presence. The beach is loaded with Mexican locals as well as international travelers, and the town is always moving. Busy streets and parks are alive with people and children. People here are just living their lives. Also, if you see people wearing jeans at the beach, that's how you know they live here in Playa del Carmen and they're just enjoying their day off work. Tourists are easy to spot because they're walking around shirtless, whether they're on the beach or in town. But that's fine because nearly all the restaurants here allow for shirtless and shoeless dining. Admittedly, Playa del Carmen is super touristy by any standard, but it's seriously livable. The quality of life here is great because it's convenient to do just about anything you want to do. Now for the Tulum vibe. If you're coming to Tulum for a short vacation, then it's honestly a perfect spot. The beach is gorgeous, and the path leading to and from the main town has a lively, rustic feel to it. You can tell the town is designed for short-term visitors, because there's a COVID testing station every 500 meters. This is to provide folks with negative tests before they board their respective flights back home. But stay longer than a week in Tulum and the cracks begin to show. There's a pretentiousness here, like it's been manufactured around the influencer market. You can tell because there's always a line of people waiting to pose for the same photos. Simply put, the town is suffering from an identity crisis. It's like super high class, expensive beach clubs on one hand, and on the other hand, ancient ruins connecting to Mexico's rich history. So which one is it? Stay here long enough and you'll begin to notice the difference between the casual tourists and the folks who decide to remain long enough to become Tuluminati. What's the Tuluminati, you ask? There is a certain look to the people that live in Tulum. It's so distinct. There's like some dark initiation ritual for anyone that decides to live in Tulum. It's like you have to wear light colored, loose fitting linens. You can't wear shoes. You have to wear lots of jewelry and you have to have this large flat brim hat. Go up and down the road and you'll spot what I call Tuluminati stations, where you can equip yourself with all the bohemian chic apparel you'll need to fit right in. Okay, time for a disclaimer. The following is not intended to be any sort of medical advice 
I do not encourage anyone to do any drugs. Please do your own research on this matter. Tulum is a place that facilitates spiritual awakenings via powerful psychedelics like DMT and ayahuasca. I took part in a DMT ceremony three months ago here in Tulum, and it actually had a profound lasting effect on me. For more of my opinion on this matter, check out this video I made on my other channel, My Experience Smoking the Toad 5-MeO DMT. I'll put a link in the description. Plenty of DMT or ayahuasca retreats exist in this area. I've heard mixed reviews, and rightfully so. A lot of these centers designed to orchestrate spiritual awakenings ironically seem to have fallen off the path themselves. I was disappointed to see the Bufo Alveria Sanctuary with a vape vending machine installed right out front. It's my belief that these controversial compounds have serious medical potential, honestly, but come on, this just isn't a good look for the community. So the question of which is better, Tulum or Playa del Carmen, really boils down to what you're looking for. If you want a short vacation experience, then Tulum is going to offer you the best time. Just be prepared to spend a lot of money. But if you're looking for a place to live a normal life for short to long term, then Playa del Carmen takes the cake in my book. It's also a much more affordable spot for short term vacationers as well. Alright folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, again, give this video a thumbs up, help me out. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already, because I'm going to be busting out a bunch of new videos soon here about Mexico. And I'll see you next time.